Hi, I'm Daryl. Uh, welcome back to my shop. Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a zero clearance insert. Uh, I just so happened to have gone by a friend's house this morning uh, to help him out with a little project, and I noticed he didn't have a zero clearance insert, and uh, he brought to mind a, a problem that uh, is common with, you know, table saw, table saws, particularly, um, you know, contractor type saws. Uh, the this is the insert from his this is the dado blade insert from his table saw and as you can see it's pretty thin on the edges and that presents a problem for a lot of people because it's hard to make a zero clearance insert for these because of the fact that the edges are so thin but I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to get around that today the way we're going to start off is we're going to take um, our original throat plate here and a piece of scrap plywood and we're going to go ahead and, and roughly trace the shape onto this plywood here. Okay. All right. Now we got that done, take it over to the bandsaw and uh, cut it out. Now that we've cut our blank down closer to the size of our actual throat plate, we're going to go ahead and we're going to utilize some double stick tape to attach the two of them together temporarily so that it, we can use this original plate as a guide. Alright, All right. and then we're going to take this and we're going to put this on here and the important thing is you want to make sure that you have a little bit of uh, material hanging over the edge of your original. But this isn't exactly, this isn't really an exact uh, procedure right here requiring a great deal of precision. As you can see here, you can see that there's material showing all the way around the original plate for the most part. We're going to put a flush trim bit in the router. You could also do this operation in the table uh, if you feel more comfortable doing that. Uh, I've worked with routers for a while and uh, I feel pretty comfortable using my palm router and a couple of bench cookies to raise it up off the surface so that the bearing doesn't hit my um, surface that I'm working from. You want to set your router so that the bearing touches so that this your original piece rides on the bearing but also so that your cutter is removing all of the material to make it flush with your with your pattern. Okay. And I find that these bench cookies work very well. They don't, it doesn't slide uh, because they're pretty much as wide as my uh, template here. It's pretty stable. So. the holes that are on this plate here. Um, these holes are actually what allows you to pass a screwdriver through the plate in order to, le in order to level the plate to the top of your uh, table saw. We have this little uh, catch I guess to uh, you know catch it underneath the surface of the of the table. Um, we need, and because we have that on the bottom and we can't lay this down flat, so we're going to have to lay out our holes from the bottom of our uh, 
uh, zero clearance insert. So at this time, this is a good time to decide which side, if, if you have a preference, will be the top or the bottom because we're going to lay these holes out from the bottom. Let's go ahead and set these aside. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to line these up and then we're going to start copying these holes. The positioning of the holes isn't really that critical. You just want to try to uh, you want to try to drill them as square as straight as you can so so that they end up in the same location on the top as they are on the bottom. You could just as easily do this operation with a with a drill press if you saw fit to do so. Okay. And a sacrificial back of board will help, you know, with blowing out the other side of the hole. give us the four holes for the adjustments and the hole for the screw that locks it down. These uh, white marks, white pencil marks here represent the places where this plate actually rests on the, um, support, on the supports, the leveling points inside the cabinet of the saw. So what we need to do is we need to relieve uh, we need to relieve these areas on the bottom of our uh, zero clearance insert so that those places will sit rough, will be roughly an eighth of an inch on those edges so that it'll have the opportunity to sit flush. In fact, it'll have the opportunity to sit a little bit less than flush so that you can, uh, to allow for the use of the uh, screws the leveling screws to be able to level it to the surface of the tabletop. And you know, you don't have to be exactly accurate with this either because honestly you could, if you were off a little bit, you could sand the top of your zero clearance insert, which is something that I'm going to do before I'm done. I changed out my router bit. Um, I went from a flush trim here, a uh, bearing guided flush trim bit, to just a straight cutting bit. And I also used the template once again to determine how much material I needed to, to, to determine how much material I needed to remove from the back side to relieve from the back side, bottom side of this insert. I just put both of them on a known flat surface, top of my table saw. Top of your table saw will likely, will likely do as well. And then just scribe a line here, and then once you have that line, then bring that to your your router, and use that line to set up your depth of cut. Now that we have our relieved areas marked and our router bit set to the right depth of cut. We'll go ahead and relieve this material. Now, uh, you can see that this is quite a bit of a cut. You know, this is going to be taking off quite a bit of material. So, you don't want to try to hog all this off in one pass. Um, I'm going to, you know, gingerly work my way around the outside until I get to where I want to go. A zero clearance insert that will work well in theory it'll work in my buddy's saw so uh, this needs a little bit of sandpaper a little bit of sanding uh, I highly recommend waxing it uh, to encourage uh, smoother travel of your pieces across the top of your of your uh, table saw uh, one final uh, piece of business that needs to be attended to is uh, this hook back here Right, and basically what this hook does is it keeps the plate. It uh, it's it fixes the plate in the back of the of the uh, slot so that it doesn't tip up on you. So we do need to put something back there. 
uh, to prevent that. The way I typically do that is I take a small nail, a finished nail, uh, whatever, clip the head off of it, and use the nail as my drill bit. We're going to pick a place below um, this thickness right here, which is really encompassing that first ply in my case. So what I'm going to do is just go ahead and any place in the back is fine. You go ahead and start drilling that in there. You go ahead and take a hammer, tap that in there a little bit. Perfect. Let's see, there was one more thing that I wanted to attend to. Um, I don't know what that is though. Ah, you also need some kind of hole to be able to pull this sucker out when you're done using it. We're going to go ahead and chuck up a 5 8 inch spade bit and go ahead and put a finger hole in here. Okay. Lovely. So now we can pick this puppy up. I guess I'll go ahead and sand this up a little bit and uh, give my buddy a call and I'll see if we can uh, go by and visit his shop and uh, see how we did. After I arrived at my friend's house to make the final adjustments to the trim put to the uh, zero clearance insert, you can see here that it took a lot of fiddling to get it to work. Um, unfortunately, the video camera stopped working before I was able to complete the adjustments and get it to fit, but I did go ahead and uh, take a picture, which I will post that after uh, this quick little uh, high speed uh, version of the adjustments is complete. Today we were able to successfully help my friend out and make him a zero clearance insert for his contractor saw. I hope that some of you who find this information helpful. You know, thanks for coming by and uh, have a good day.